I evokes Barnaby Dixon here. So in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I, I often get the question, how do I make my puppets glow in the dark? What paint do I use? I actually don't use a paint. I actually use this material, a type of plastic here. So you see how well it glows under UV light. And when I turn off the light, it retains the glow pretty well. I'll also mention this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I'll have Dabchik, my bird puppet, come on at the end and explain a little bit more about that. So the raw material is a plastic called polycaprolactone, I think, or PCL. And this is a type of thermoplastic, so you can heat it up and then mold it into whatever shape you want. So I'm going to put some in this pan here. All right. And then I'm going to pour some hot water in and get that boiling. Cool. So when you pour it in, um, you should use something like a spatula or something maybe like these tongs with a silicon end so it doesn't stick to it so easily. And you should move it around so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan quite so easily as well. Okay, so you'll notice as it gets hotter, it goes kind of like ice. It goes kind of like a clear glassy color. And that means that it's basically molten now and you can actually um, sculpt it with your fingers. It's going to be a little bit hot though. So I recommend having some cold water close by to dip your fingers in if you burn them. Okay, so now the plastic is molten and it's pretty transparent, but I'm going to give it a couple of seconds before I start. Uh, it's not too bad, actually, not too hot. Having said, <laughs> I've done this so many times. I did it last night, actually. Check out that blister I got on the end of my finger. That's pretty nasty, huh? I'm going to make a little kind of like a dish. All right, and now I'm going to pour in some of this UV powder here. So we're going to be using the Aqua UV powder, and we're going to just pour it onto that little plate there. About, oops, sticking to the bag a bit. That amount is pretty good. And now what we're going to do is kind of like pierogi or something. We fold up the filling like this and mold it without letting uh, the powder come out. So there's two ways it could come out if you didn't fold it properly or if the, uh, if the plastic rips. So we want to try and keep the powder in the middle of it as we mold it. Okay, so that's pretty good, and as is, it glows fairly well. You see that? Um, but one of the reasons it glows so well is because it's still a little bit warm and therefore a bit translucent. So what we're going to do is put it in again and, uh, and repeat the process. It looks so interesting, man. Okay, so same as we did before. Take it off. Oh, <laughs> maybe wait a few more seconds than I did. Pretty hot. And then we add a bit more glowing powder. Something like, get away with that amount, I reckon. Okay, so we fold it up, keeping the, the powder inside. I'm just folding it now, and this is what it looks like when the outer layer comes a bit too thin. Can you see how the, the powder's starting to, to escape a little bit there? So we just want to fold that bit back on the inside. This will probably happen if you're doing this for the first time as well, but it's no big problem. Okay, let's take a look at how it glows now. And you see how bright it is now? We're going to do another one, I reckon. Whoa! Oh, spilled hot water on me. Don't do that, guys. I just want to light it up in here a sec because it looks so cool. Look at that. Wow! I'm just remembering to keep moving it around so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. I think that's probably warm enough. Okay. I'll drip the excess water off. It's actually the water that can burn you a bit more readily than the plastic. So it's good to make sure it's not too wet when it comes out. It's also good to, uh, to make sure your fingers are clean so you don't get any dirt in this as well. So the reason that I'm adding the powder in stages is because if I was to add it all at once, uh, it would be a bit too tricky to mix in without spilling it everywhere. It's hard to know how much to add, really. I think uh, if you add too much... Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that then? If you add too much, the plastic can get a little bit too, uh, too brittle when it finally sets. Uh, so you don't want that. Uh, I think when you start feeling the surface go a little bit grainy, uh, you can get the sense that there's enough powder in there. And I'm starting to feel that now. There's a good way of mixing it too, stretching out like this. You don't want to do this when it's too full of powder, or what, rather when the powder's close to the surface, because it might burst out. But when it's pretty well mixed in, it's a pretty safe way to mix. Okay, it's starting to cool down and harden now, so I might just uh, stick it in the heat for a little bit longer. 
so that I can mix it up a bit more. Okay, cool. You know what we can also do? Let's turn the lights off and mix it in the dark. I think that'll look really cool. Okay. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that's incredible. Wow, <laughs> look at that. It's mental. Woo! <laughs> look at that. That's so cool. So the most practical shape to get it into at this stage is a, uh, is a rope, I find. That way you can use it bit by bit just by snipping bits off. It's a bit harder to dip into if it's a whole block of it. The thinner it gets, the quicker it cools. So often you'll find that the thinnest bits go hardest, the, uh, the fastest and the thicker bits take a little bit longer. Look at that. That is lovely. Okay, so I'm going to coil this up a little bit, like I did with the first one. And there we go. Check that out. So I'll use this as a kind of decoration for my puppets. I'll break little bits off, uh, reheat it, and apply it in kind of like strips, like it, so it has kind of a glow-in-the-dark lining. Uh, in my experience, the best two versions of this UV powder are the green and the aqua versions. I think they do do purple and orange as well, but, but neither of them are, are as bright as these two here. And I will put more uh, detailed descriptions of all of the materials that I've used in this video uh, in the video, de uh, video description down below. But for now, I'm going to throw it over to Dabchick for more information about our sponsor, Skillshare. Gather round the phosphorescent coil, dear viewers, and let me tell you of an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. What are you doing? A place where you can fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career. That's right, Skillshare is a platform where you can learn all sorts of gubbins, spanning a range of professional subjects, from animation to music production to photography. Perhaps you could try this class by Cielo de la Paz. It's about how you can use your phone to make films, kind of like we do. And you know, it's a cool way to do it. You, you take your phone pretty much everywhere you go anyway. Uh, it's small, compact, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to most media production equipment. And it literally fits in your pocket. Goodness me, 2019, here we are. <sighs> what were we talking about? Skillshare. Oh yeah, of course. So for thousands of quality classes, sign up to Skillshare. What's stopping you? Oh, what, the annual subscription of less than $10 a month? Fine, whatever you cheap buggers. Use the link in the video description and get two months for free. Plus that way, they'll know that Uncle Dab has sent you and they'll pay me more money. <laughs> Yay. Okay, all right, come on now, they get the idea. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. You know, it's been a little bit, so we'll do a proper episode again one of these days with, uh, with drugs and explosions and uh, sexy men. Um, it, it'll be great. Stay tuned. Are you, are you still here? Go make me like a, a margarita or something. Cheers, guys.